right, friends. Um, I'm Julie McDonnell from Mesa County Libraries, and uh, this will just be a short video about using sensory bins for fun and for learning, and we want to bust the boredom. So um, I have included three links with really good ideas. Yeah, you can see all three. The magic technology. They all have fantastic ideas on why they're helpful, what you can use them for, and ideas so you don't have to come up with everything. Um, the ideas are out there. I want to go over... Um, oh, first, as always, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing. Nobody has gone through this kind of thing before. Nobody knows what they're doing. We're all winging it. Um, so I just want to encourage us to use unity and compassion, and we'll help each other get through this. So thank you for what you're doing. Um, first of all, what what is a sensory bin? And it's essentially any kind of box or bin um, and uh, or container, and you can fill it with anything, any um, material or sensory item, um, such as here's a bin, right? Shoe box, anything like that. Here's a great big bin, anything like that. Could this be a sensory bin? Well, of course, a little bit different, but why not? Let's have difference. Let's do that. Um, and then you fill it with some sort of material or texture. And then the why, the why, here's a list. Um, tactile stimulation, a lot of uh, senses, five sensory play, figuring things out for little kids. Imaginative play, don't we need that? Use your imagination. These are good for that. Fine motor skills, exploring language, because kids like to talk out loud as they play, and we can talk out loud with them and give them examples and teach them new vocabulary. You can do it with them or let them do it on their own. Either way, these are some good things. Um, coordination, um, recognizing kind of their space, their body in space. Um, exploring and coordination. Attention span. Wouldn't it be fun to sit down and spend more than three minutes on something? Your kids might do that. They might. A learning. What? Yeah, learning could be included in this too. It can be fun and it can be really simple. There's lots of really good reasons for using sensory, using sensory bins to have fun and to learn. Um, I want to remind you, not two things, three things. <laughs> First, be mindful um, of choking hazards. So you know your children, if they put things in their mouth, be mindful of what size materials you use. If they're little bitties, be there with them to make sure it's played with appropriately and not in the mouth. Uh, number two, don't force a texture on anyone that doesn't like that texture. Some kids are real aversive to some of these feel feelings and textures. Um, maybe they don't like shaving cream. Don't force their hands in it. Then they'll just learn to hate it more. Um, but you can make a shaving cream activity, sensory bin, and show your child how fun it is. Maybe another sibling can show them how fun it is and then just leave it out they'll probably find their way to it if it looks enticing and fun for them. So that was number two, don't force a texture. And number three, have towels handy um, so the kids wipe their hands on the towels and not on the couch or your carpet. Try to reduce the mess. Um, and what's kind of fun about these is all your materials, all your mess is contained in one area. If it's a water play activity, you might want to do it outside. Um, if it's messy, maybe put a towel underneath your bin to keep the mess contained a little bit. Um, so you have the basic idea. We've got your bins. What fillers can you use? Hmm. Well, there's a few ideas here. So yeah, uh, dough, water beads, aquarium rocks, jello. Yeah. Um, packing peanuts, shredded paper, bird seed is great. Popped popcorn. Don't use the buttered kind. That's a different kind of, uh, Add to the sensory. Who knows? Why not? Um, mud. Okay. Put mud in your bin and then you put um, your farm animals in it and the kids get to find the farm animals and then maybe you have another bin with water and they wash the mud off the farm animals. 
be as thematic or as crazy as you want. Um, ice cubes, great on a hot summer day. Cotton balls, rocks, leaves. You can go seasonal. If you've got snow outside, put your snow in your bin. If you've got rocks and leaves and fall things, put that in your bin. If you've got the fresh cut weeds and lawn from your front yard, put those in your bin. So seasonal leaves, pine cones, dry cereal. That would be fun. Um, cooked pasta. That's a whole different texture. It makes me go, ew. But why not? For fun. Dry pasta. Yeah, yeah, more about that. Um, feathers, slime. You could do a whole day of making slime and then put it in your bins and make activities around that. Um, marbles, beads, water, bubbles, bubbles. Put some water in your bin, put some dish soap in there, have the kids stir it up and make all those bubbles. That's fun all by itself. Then you add stuff to it. Um, shaving cream. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and it smells good sometimes. Um, whipped cream, pudding. If you don't want to do mud, put your farm animals in chocolate pudding. Yeah. Beans, rice, those are kind of the most common because they're cheap and they store easily. Kitty litter, I'd say make it clean. Um, <clears throat> sand, mud, dirt, the list can go on and on. This is just some ideas. So there's there's some ideas. Um, and in your bin, so your kids can use their hands, or maybe they have little dump trucks, and that could be fun. Or... Bowls and cups and these things and scoops and ladles and spoons. Um, if I said food tong, would you know what a food? Yeah, those things. Tongs, I think that's right. Yes, um, if you're doing water and stuff, a sieve would be really fun. Um, little pincher things those come with different kits or spoons. Anything you have that can add to this, any of your activities. Those things are fun to put in your bins, uh, to use in your bins. Okay, <clears throat> we've got the bins. We've got the filler. We've got some sorting tools if you don't want to use just your hands. What are some ideas? So I want to give you some simple ideas. Some are really simple, some are a little more complex, but we'll talk about that too. So um, I had oh, I had this bin full of sand and the hardware store had um, bags of sand and some had broken and they just gave me their leftover sand for free. Free! Um, so I put some foam numbers on the copy machine and ran a copy and then we put them in the sand and the kids found the numbers and then they just matched it so the finding and matching you can do letters you can do numbers use whatever you have we have shapes and you can even trace around the shapes on a piece of paper. You don't have to have your copy machine open working. Um, and then the kids find them and they match them on the paper where you traced the shapes before. So number, shapes, letters, all those things find and match. Right? Simple, learning, fun, a little different with the texture and the finding things. It's a little bit more exciting and mysterious. Um, let's say... Your kids are working on their names. So this is an example. They put some dry pasta in their bin and they had some, looks like maybe foam letters. And I love this. So they write out the name and because the kids are still learning and they find the letters and they match the letters. So that could be used. Um, and this is cute too. A place for the letters in their name and letters that don't go in their name. That's a whole different skill too. Um, both those activities. You could use this same format um, for uh, sight words, for vocabulary words, um, anything else that the kids are working on. Um, you can use that. Does it have to be dry pasta? No, it doesn't have to be dry. Whatever you have. Bird seed, sand, clean kitty litter, um, cotton balls. Fill the bin, put in those letters. The kids are searching through them and having a good time. Um, this was another idea. This was from... Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? And they dyed rice different colors to go with the story. And then they just drew 
pictures and they just have uh, like the white dog and the purple cat and the blue horse. That's a lot of prep work and you know all those colors are getting messed up real quick. But if you want to do it, it's super cute. Or you could just have plain white rice and have the colors of the, the critters from the story, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? And the kids can physically tell the story with you while you tell the story or you tell the story and then they retell the story. Lots of things you could do with this kind of idea. And along those lines, here's a second one. <laughs> so this is from, uh, we're going on a bear hunt and they got a big bin and they put things from all over the house that could retell the story. So they've got their little teddy bear and they've got cotton balls and they've got rocks for water and um, green Easter grass for grass. And again, you could tell the story and the kids participate with you or you tell the story and then they retell it with all these materials. But how much fun. Do you think they might spend more than a minute on this? Oh yeah. They can keep playing. They can make up new stories. You can ask them, what other story could you do? It could go on and on. It's all your imagination and your kids' imagination and fun and learning practice. Uh, let's say, um, oh, simple enough too. So let's say you've got a book and you ask your kid to go through the book. They don't have to be readers yet. Pick out a word and then they pick out the letters to spell that word. You don't even have to be there to say right or wrong. They can check their spelling with the word right from the book. And then go through a book, put the letters back, find another word, find the letters to spell the word. Fun and easy, especially if they have a story that they really love, they could spend a lot of time on this. They could spend a lot of time. You don't have to be right there. Or you could be. Um, how about you mix up the water and the suds and you put all your kids' cars in them and you have a car wash. Simple, fun, easy. Um, how about you get all your, your bugs and your reptiles and you put grass in a bin and then they have to find all the bugs and the reptiles. How much fun could that be? They could even describe them. You could say, what word would you use to describe this? So it's beyond frog and now it's, well, he's got blue, blue, what blue legs. Wow. You could describe, you could how would you move if you were a cricket? And then they can add uh, movement and creativity into the sensory bin idea as well. A snake, how would you move if you were a snake? Whatever you have, use your imagination. If you have Pokemon little critters, I don't know, I think that's who they are. Um, use them. If you have, who are these? Oh, Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol, you can make some, you can add Add the dogs, find three dogs, and they have to find three dogs. Okay, now find two dogs, find two dogs. How many dogs do you have all together? You can make it whatever you want. Make it fun. Um, what if what if you put all of your Mr. Potato Head body parts in your sensory bin, and then you give your kid Mr. Potato and said, okay, build them. Build them, build them. So they're digging in the material. They're finding the things. They're building Mr. Potato Head. It's fun, and it could take them a long time. We like it. Um, let's see. There are some pre-made bin ideas, and a lot of them. Um, you can get some for free, some you pay for. Uh, this was a Halloween bin that we did. These were free. wish I remember the site. But I don't. But we have black beans in our bin. And then I got materials from the dollar store. Use what you have. And then, so these bins were find two eyeballs and five pumpkins and four fangs. And then I had them pick them out. And then we had just a, just a bowl. And they put the things in the bowl. And then when they were done, they could check their work and make sure that they had everything that was on their card. So these are pretty fun. And they're pretty fancy. But... Do you need fancy? No, you don't need fancy. You're tired. You're tired. So let's make this simple. Um, get yourself a bin, throw in some water, throw in some grass, throw in some sticks, wood bark pieces, whatever you have. Throw in some dinosaurs or, or get those reptiles and critters back. Put those in there. 
put a penguin in. Why not? Why not? Put it in there and make yourself a swamp. Make yourself a swamp. So this was a dinosaur swamp idea. Um, but outside, outside. But how many hours, especially when the weather gets hot, would your kids spend playing in the water and having that whole sensory experience, pretending, maybe even sharing and taking turns with siblings? Maybe that could happen. It could happen. Um, so have fun. You doesn't need to be pretty. doesn't need to be perfect. Be creative. Use what you've got. Have your great ideas. Um, I hope this video gave you some fun ideas. Um, let's learn. Let's have fun. And let's hang in there. And I hope to see you soon. And thank you so much for being here. Bye.